is a, a list of the topic areas that we cover in our soft skills training. It's about half the program, so it's not all the modules, but it's the topic areas. And as you scan that, there's probably a couple things in there that require a little bit of discussion. Let me, let me just stop with status. Status. We all have status. Status is your stature. It's how people feel about you in the organization. It's what you project. Right. And MBB is a high status role, although week one in MBB training, if we ask the MBBs, how many of you consider yourselves leaders? About half will say, yeah, I'm a leader. And the other, by the time you're through with the program, they're all leaders. They're all ready to, you know, it's all going well. So status is, is what you project. And we, and we talk about the need to understand and appreciate your status, but also to adjust it to the situation. So if I'm training green belts, I'm going to behave one way. If I'm giving a presentation to the board, I want to try and match their status. So I'm going to elevate my status. And we talk about how to do that. So it's an important part of communications. The other thing up there that you may not have, have seen before in this kind of training is called Shakespeare Leadership and Communications. And I added a slide on that just to, just to help out a bit. Shakespeare, we all know Shakespeare, right? Master of Communications. His plays have a lot of examples in them about leadership. And what we do with Shakespeare, we, we have a saying, it's, it's uh, vous jade. Deja vu is the feeling that I've done this before. Vous jade is the feeling that I've never done this before. <laughs> so this, this gives them a little vous jade because the, the MBBs learn their lines from Shakespeare. Uh, they present their lines from Shakespeare. They do a lot of role playing in this, in this uh, activity. And this is about two and a half days. We've, we've lengthened it a bit. The intent is to make folks more powerful speakers, more enthusiastic, improve your connections with voice, body, and spirit. And it works. It's just so much fun to watch. Now, any of the MVPs want to comment on this particular experience? It was what? very enlightening. Very enlightening. Yeah, it is. it's cool. It's, it's fun. It was very fun. And it's called Leave Your Comfort Zone Every Day, because take a bunch of engineers and throw them into this environment, and they're way outside their comfort zone. Right? Mini tab is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool, and it, it's very effective. It's one of those things you can see the effect on the people before and after. It's almost immediate. And people find things in themselves they didn't never knew were there. You know, Hell, I'm a techie. I'm telling you this Shakespeare stuff. Uh, the other aspect of this is my position on teaching and leading this stuff is it, it's an act. A lot, of, And I don't mean act in a, in a bad way, it's not a phony thing, but it's an act. If you want to get people enthusiastic and get them to follow you, you've got to have some zip. You've got you to be in their face. You have to develop your act. This helps you develop the act. Uh, long list, hard skills. These are advanced hard skills. Uh, Kind of the overarching theme here is that we really believe in the notion that you know y is a function of a few x's. We all teach that. We teach this stuff. Y is f of x1, x2, x3. What we're trying to do with these tools is really bring it to play in the business setting. If y really is a function of x, what's the function? If you understand the function, you can control your business. If things go out of whack, you know what knobs to turn. So we spend a lot of time talking about models. All these things are model-based. Every tool in Minitab is model-based. And if you don't know what the model is, you're, you're, you're on thin ice. So we spend a lot of focus, a lot of time on, on all this stuff. Uh, now, we don't cover everything in the standard black belt program, except we threw in the boot camp. So this is where we'll go back and we'll review things like MSA and capability, which you know, the belts know, but they may have forgotten some elements of that. So at the end of the day, by the time we're all done, we've covered all the advanced tools pretty much. And we teach this stuff, by the way, at a graduate level. This is not a, not a, a program for wimps. Uh, and then we go back and we cover the green belt and black belt tools that are not covered up here in, during, during the camp. <clears throat> okay, electives. We've got nine electives. And I think most of them speak for themselves. The introduction to design methods is for operational black belts who are changing careers who want to get into DFSS. So it's kind of a bridge. Two electives on DFSS, time series and forecasting. Anybody have forecasting problems in the room? Anybody not have forecasting problems? Right. Uh, 
uh, DOE. The Six Sigma process design is about re-engineering a process or starting from scratch to design a process. I mean, there's an assumption that everybody knows how to do that. And that's not really true. If you, you found yourself in that situation, it's an uncomfortable position to be in. How do I design a business process to deliver what we want to deliver to our customers? And so that, that's what this elective is all about. And then another elective on it. This is a new one, advanced Shakespeare communications. Okay, so why do we spend so much time on the advanced hard skills? A little bit of editorializing again. We talk about low-hanging fruit early in a program. It's easy to find projects, and typically the projects are solved with a charter, a process map, cause and effect, FMEA, simple statistical tools, and a control plan. And then you hit the wall because you run out of the low-hanging fruit, and you're left with the big strategic projects, hopefully linked to your business plan. And many of those problems cannot be solved without advanced tools. So that's where they come in, and so as the low-hanging fruit kind of wanes, the big ones kick in, and you need the big tools to solve many of those problems. And you heard, I mean, Dana and Chuck this morning talk about that was a big problem. Right. A bit on certification, uh, we offer certification, and this is uh, the elements that go into the certification process. The, the MBBs must complete the five-week core. They have to submit their own personal development plan. And then if I take the path over here, they have to apply the plan. That is, the plan includes uh, their big whys. What is it their company wants them to do? Phase two, how am I going to do it? How am I going to deliver? Uh, personal SWOT analysis. What are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? And what am I going to do to improve myself kind of a thing? Now, when I go in to do the assessments, what I'm looking for is, in fact, if the boss wanted you to deliver $10 million, you deliver it. Right? If the boss says train 300 people, you've trained them. So a lot of it is going back to the personal development plan and making sure, verifying, that, in fact, the MVPs have delivered. Two specific or two role-specific electives, and then the assessment essentially is me doing an audit, which typically takes a day or two to go through. Uh, a little bit on the personal, I've already talked about all this, but the personal development plan. We can't get away from this why is a function of X. Once a statistician, always a statistician. There you go. The, the whys are what, what the boss wants. Money, training, leadership, you know, link the projects to our strategy kind of thing. The X's are the things that the MVP is going to do to make it happen. And then I mentioned the SWAT assessment. Typically, uh, what we'll do is we'll talk to a number of folks, executives, people that have been trained, mentored bells, and the MVP candidate themselves, and in so doing, we're, we're verifying the elements of your PDP. Uh, technical depth in key areas, this is, this is evaluated using the homework and the testing. Interpersonal coaching and mentoring skills, they are, the, the MVPs are rated and assessed while they're teaching, while they're participating in the soft skills. And, right, also project reviews. This is me looking at their project work. And I'm looking for the appropriate application of tools and, and some flow and some logic to, this, to the problem solution. So that's the, that's the uh, uh, executive assessment process. 